Hello everyone and this is an introduction to the new SOP level flip tools that got added to Houdini 19.5. So this is a very simple uh, simulation that I had that I built up. So this is what we'll try and you know replicate. Okay so uh, to start off with the the new simulation system or it's not new it's just they brought the DOP level flip tools to uh, to SOP level and with some added functionality. So to set up a really simple simulation, you need four nodes. So the first one is called a flip container. And the flip container is where you get uh, sort of like some basic properties for your simulation. So your particle separation and stuff is in the flip container, which defines the resolution or the density of your uh, of your fluid you have the bounding box you know because uh, flip is sort of like a mixture between uh, volume based simulation and particle based so you have like a you know a bounding domain this can also be overridden because with the new tools you also have options to have it be uh, circular or uh, cylindrical or spherical or you know uh, any, any shape that you want. We won't get into that, but you have options. Okay, uh, you also have the option to add gravity here and then you can do some basic things like you have the density of the particles, you have surface tension, viscosity, and you can also add like additional attributes if you want and even custom attributes if you want. Okay, so the next tool we require is called a flip boundary. Okay, now the flip boundary is pretty simple. It has like the activation option and it has two options say source and sink and then what is like it has like these boundary uh, options which is you can have it at none or velocity or pressure we'll take a look at velocity and pressure and i'll just connect these now if you go to the documentation and you look at the sop flip fluids uh, it will mention something called as flip source and flip sink now these they, these there is nothing called flip source and flip sync. Okay, they are actually options inside the boundary node. So if you type if you start looking for flip source as a as a node, you are not going to find it. Okay, it's basically here, like this is the source and sync. Okay, now once you've done this, you get a last uh, input here which is open, which is where you put in your geometry. Okay, so I'm going to take a we're going to take a test pig head and we'll emit from this. Okay, so I'll just take this, I'll do a transform and I'll take it up. And I can just plug this in here and you'll see that it immediately sort of generates like a volume for it. Okay, I'll just keep this slightly high and I'll move this up. And then uh, if you don't do anything else, I can just take a flip solver and that will pretty much be it. So I can just take a flip solver, connect everything. And that's it. Like if I press play, I'll get a basic fluid emission. Now uh, we can turn on some collision. So I can come in here to the flip solver. I can come to collision and we can turn on a ground plane. So now if you press play, you'll get a ground plane. And once it exits, uh, once it reaches the boundary, it just sort of exits it and disappears. Okay. Now, unlike the DOP level uh, flip tools, okay, it doesn't have the option to collide with uh, the boundary. Okay. So what we can do is let's say if we want to set up a basic collision, let's make this slightly bigger and I can take a box. So I'll take a box and I'll just make it, you know, like big enough. Go up to there. Yeah and I'll take the bottom face and delete it and then I'll just give it some poly extrude. So we have this turn on output back so it's it has thickness and then in here you need to take a node called flip collide and once you take that you connect the box into the flip collide. So now you have this and if I press play now, let's let's just take a null because I don't want to see that. So if I press play now, I will get a collision happening at the boundary. There you go. 
Okay, now if you just want the emission to last for maybe like one frame, then you can come into your flip boundary and you can modify the activation. Like maybe I just want it for five frames, you know, so I can do a, a dollar FF less than five, or you can keyframe it, like either ways is fine. So now you'll get an emission for five frames. Okay, let's, let's keep it to 10. Yeah. Now the particle resolution or the fluid resolution is controlled from the flip container, but that can be overridden from the flip solver as well. Like if you come into the setup, you'll have something called flip, uh, you'll have something called particle separation, you can turn that on. Okay, and then you can control it from here. Okay, but if you don't want to do this, we can also like, we can just come up here and control it from this point. Okay, so come to the top and you can do like 0 0.05. So you'll get, you know, it's the same thing, just like you have options in two different places. Okay, I'm just going to change the visualization because I kind of prefer uh, like two tone. I don't know. I just like the colors in that. And you can sort of adjust the max speed. Yeah, it just looks a bit more colorful. Okay, now if we wanted to sort of uh, get more collision objects, then we can just add into this. So let's say if I pick up like uh, the test rubber toy and I can take a transform, maybe make it slightly bigger and I can move it up. Yeah. And then we can just do a merge. So, you know, you'll automatically get like, you know, two collision objects. So if I press play and let it fall, so there you go. Okay, so now you have some very simple options in here, which is like you can come to the flip solver and you can come to collision and there's an option called stick on collision. Okay, so if I just get that up to maybe like 0.5, then you can have the particle sort of stick to uh, the rubber toy as it falls down. So there you go, see, so now it sort of sticks to this. And you can also see it sticking on the sides. Okay, so once you've done this much, you can also do some other things like, uh, if you come into the flip boundary, you have options to add pressure or velocity. So if we add pressure, pressure needs more than one frame of emission. Like if you are just at one frame, it's not gonna work. So if we just add some uniform pressure, what it does is it, it sort of like internally builds up pressure in the fluid and it'll sort of explode outward. So if I press play now, this is what will happen. See. So the fluid kind of, you know, explodes. See, so you basically get this. Or you can add velocity. So what velocity does is you can do things like, uh, we can add like some normal velocity, which means it will move out in the direction of the normals. And it can also scale the existing velocity. So if we add some existing velocity, you can sort of scale it up. So what we'll do is, let's say if I keep this low and I'm gonna lower the flip boundary to just about two frames. So what I can do is in here, in the test geometry for the pig head, I can add like a point velocity node. And so I can do some basic things here, like maybe if I add some uh, velocity in the Z axis. Okay, so let's say if I uh, add a velocity of two. So if I press play, hold on, yeah, okay. You'll see it sort of moving forward. Uh, let's make it five. Yeah, there you go. Or, uh, you know, let's keep this low. You can also add things like we can add some curl noise to this if you want. So you have like your basic options in here. I'll just reduce the stick on collision option. Yeah, okay. Okay, so now one of the other interesting things you can also do with this. Okay, now what's happening is that uh, in order to generate the simulation, uh, these nodes are generating a, a whole bunch of fields. Okay, like if you look, at, if you look here, you see it's generating like this thing called guiding surface and pressure and velocity and source and you know, all of those things. So what we can do is, 
we can actually modify that as well. Okay, so you need to add some basic velocity in order for the velocity field to be generated. But let's say if I turn this off and I pick up the volume velocity node. Okay, so if I just type in velocity and you'll find something called volume velocity. So I can just drop it in the middle over here, you know, like after my flip boundary, because this is where the geometry is coming in and getting converted to like a volume field. Okay, see, so this is where it's happening. So I'll come in here and I'm going to pick up a uh, well. And if I come to the flip solver or I come to the end, I don't want to see it uh, as spheres. Okay, but what I can do is let's say if I add vortex and uh, what height am I on? 5.4, okay. So let's take this to five. Yeah, and let's keep it to X axis and we can increase the, yeah, see will increase the angular velocity. So now I, I'm, I'm adding additional velocity through like a volume based node. Okay. So I'm actually modifying the volume uh, velocity that is coming in. So you can do stuff like this, you know, so I, I can do this or, and then here I can add more noise if I want to, or you can take a volume warp and, you know, build your own, uh, you know, modify the volume coming in. So you can do those things as well. You can also modify the uh, the surface itself. So if I come in here, if I if I type in SDF and I can get something called as volume noise SDF, I'll drop it in after this. And we just need to check what node we need to modify. So I think we'll have to modify source. So just type in source over here and see if that works. Change this to closest point. Yeah, there you go, see. So if I increase the amplitude, so you're now modifying the, the volume node itself. And let's say if I keep this for, you know, 10 frames, I lower the angular velocity a bit. Yeah. And I can set this to, you know, keep it slightly small. I'll turn on animation. So what should happen is I'll get like an animated source. Okay, maybe I should reduce the, Let, let's bypass this temporarily. Yeah, it'll be easier to see. Okay, let's bypass this as well. And I'm gonna take the animation and like lower the pulse duration. So it's a little bit faster. Yeah, but there you go, there you go. Yeah, now it's, now it's working. So you can also modify the geometry, okay, like you can apply like a mountain sop or anything, but if you want, you can additionally modify the, the volume fields that, uh, you know, these tools are generating and get like different results. Okay. Yeah. See, so you can see it modify. There you go. Maybe if we add a bit more and Okay, that looks weird enough. That should give me enough to see what's going on. Yeah, there you go, see. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So this is like a really simple introduction to the SOP level flip tools. Okay, now, uh, as far as surfacing is concerned, it, the node is the same. You use the fluid compress and the particle fluid surface node, that doesn't change at all. That's that uh, setup is exactly the same. Uh, I will do another lesson on uh, on how to add like viscosity and do like variable viscosity and things like that. I'll do that in another video. And then we'll also take a look in uh, another lesson of how to add forces inside the flip solver. So because you have options here to add like, you know, volume fields and, you know, uh, particle forces in here. But yeah, this is how you can do like a really basic fluid setup at soft level.